Hey y'all, so the weather is a uh, mixed bag. We're getting little showers here and there, which means it's a workshop day. So I'm gonna turn this stack of tongue and groove into a door. That's coming up. All right, folks, so we have um, some tongue, tongue and groove pine and some other miscellaneous boards back there by Rachel. She's got her arm leaning on them. And the idea is to turn all of this into a door, a sliding barn style door. And so we're gonna have at it. You'll see I have one that's cut in half. That is so that there's no tongue or groove on either side of the door. So the easiest way is to cut that one in half. Um, the, the idea is to make the door as big as possible because we wanna cover the entire opening. Um, this is kind of like a weather, almost like a shutter to cover a glass door so that when there's inclement weather, don't have to worry about like hail hitting the, the glass or anything like that and kind of keep the weather out, you know, just like a, a storm shutter. So let's do this. All right. So like I said, the first step is going to be to lay these out. What I did was I marked the halfway point because there's going to be a mid span board on this door. Now I'm going to lay them out and then I have to jockey them around to hide that big knot hole along one of the diagonals that are going to brace this door so that we can fill it and it doesn't want to fall out the back. So let's do that. So now you all have a bird's eye view of what I'm about to do. So like I said, I need to stretch to lay all these boards out. So we'll go ahead and do that. And this one here is the one end cap. So it's got the cut end. So it's going to go over here. This is the one with the really big hole. Yeah, so you can see it's a pretty nasty knot right there. Unfortunately, tongue and groove comes in packs, so you can't see what's in the pack. Yeah, this was buried in the middle of this tongue and groove pack. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to square the boards up some. Um, we're not ready to nail or, or screw them yet, but we're going to square them up so that the knot is where it's going to be when, when the door is put together. And all this will make sense to you guys in a minute. All right, so that's how we're gonna put together the door, but if we just tried to glue these or do whatever, it's gonna be really weak. So we're gonna put a board across the middle. And the top. And down here at the bottom, I'm not real worried about getting the bottom one set where it needs to go right now because I need to worry about this diagonal and that it's going to cover this knot hole. <clears throat> so we're going to cut the diagonals out of this board. And we're going to see if it's going to actually cover that knot. And so it is not, not to get it, not uh, in the right spot because that has to go right there and that has to go right there. So you can see that it's just off by a little bit. And maybe if we go the diagonal the other direction, possibly, 
we can nice. land it better, which that looks like it's going to be the way it works, the best. And it really doesn't matter because we don't have a top or a bottom for the door. Um, we just have an inside and an outside for the moment. We'll figure out top and bottom when we get ready to hang the door and we'll, we'll see how it looks. Um, but this is going to be our best direction so we can actually leave the boards the way they are because we're going to get like 99% of that knot hole covered. So the next step, I need to go next door into the cow barn and cut these down to size because what we're going to do is start actually assembling this door. So we got the boards cut to length. And if you look, you can see this one. When I cut it down the middle, it bowed out quite a bit. So I'm going to have to, we're going to do the first two boards. We're going to screw them. Then we're going to work to the middle. And I have my square. These boards will be at the end of the, the grain of the door. But this one, we have to use a square to make sure that it's going straight across the door. And then the other end one is the same thing as this one. We just make it even with the end of the door. So let's get this going. So Rachel's running the dogs right now. I'm just gonna get the first couple screws in this first board. Uh, I'm using a 35 millimeter screw, the, which falls about uh, just over five millimeters short of going all the way through. So we gotta make sure that we're not overzealous in driving these into the wood. So I'm gonna try to hit that last one right in the center because I'm going to try not to split it out. Then make sure I'm squared up with the, with the whole door here. And then I'll put a second screw in. Okay, so that's our first two screws in there. And then what we'll do is make sure that that second board is nice and tight. So what we'll do is we'll actually slide the boards off of each other. All the boards except the second one. Like that. so that I can go ahead and pull it tight and make sure it's flush. And now that I'm sure that the gap is closed and that, that it's flush with the other one, I'll go ahead and put two more screws in this one. And Rachel's back. So these screws I'm going to stagger a little bit. And then we're going to go down to the other end and do the same thing down at the other end. Actually, we're going to do the middle first so that I can pull some of that, that pucker out of the wood. So Rachel's going to hold that end together for a minute. Then I'm going to find my mark here, make sure my wood is in the center. You don't have to smash them, dear. And then I'm going to put my square on here and make sure that this board is going square across the panels. And I'm going to go ahead and put the screws in this end. Make sure it's still square. And 
And then I'm going to do board number two. And then Rachel doesn't have to hold on so tight because I'm going to come down that end with her. And we'll get that last that end tightened up. Now, because all the others will be straight, what we're probably going to do is stack them all in. And we're going to pinch the door in and get the other end done so that everything is tight. And then we can just go through and hurry up and do all the screws. But we'll see. So Rachel's making sure that it's even with the end grain here. And then I'm going to do two screws in here. And then we're going to squeeze this one in. So me and Rachel will switch places, of course. Oh, I don't even know if you guys can see us, but we're right here. Hello. Huh? I said mode. All right. So we're going to reposition that camera a little better for you guys. So I'm coming on over. And what we're going to do is we'll stop you. All right. So we moved you for a little bit better of an angle. So I got the square on here just to make sure that this is sitting square and all the boards are touching the top. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the far end where Rachel's at and we're going to drive in a screw to hold everything like that. So now these are all pulled tight. They're all square. I want to get a couple of screws in here to make sure that it doesn't want to shift. I'm going to do one on each board all the way across the top. Now it's not real, it's not super critical that you pull these all really tight. You just need to get them closed to the gaps because these are going to swell and contract with the weather. Um, the good thing is we had these outside and we didn't move them inside to a dry, like climate controlled because the wood will shrink. And then when you bring it out to the, the outside, it'll swell back up and it'll end up all wavy. So if you're going to use something outside, Outside. Leave it outside so that the humidity stays in the wood because if it if the wood's allowed to shrink you'll have nothing but problems. So we'll get all these screwed together really quick. Instead of walking back and forth, I should probably just bring the screws over, huh? So we'll just throw a bunch on there. Make it a little easier. Plus, we'll speed the next couple up. All right, so now we're moving to the mid the middle. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to squeeze it together some because we have this one board here that's bowing out uh, from when I cut it down the middle. So I'll hold it and then Rachel's going to go ahead and 
move this to the square to make sure that this board's square and I'm gonna hold it all together. And here we go. Was that right? Okay. Yep. Don't full send it, go ease. Okay. Okay, so now that's all pulled together and that board's straight, uh, or I should say square. So <clears throat> Rachel's gonna go ahead and do a zigzag pattern across. And what we'll do is we'll put it in a time lapse. And yeah, here we go. All right, so that's the second board done. Now we're gonna go down the far end and do that third one. And then we gotta do some diagonals to keep this door all squared up when it's, when it's uh, hanging. What? What? So we gotta push and pull. I will. So Rachel's going to set two screws. And then I'm gonna make sure that it's all squared up. And it appears to be. Send it. Wait. Yep. All right, so now Rachel will put in some more screws. And while she's doing that, I'll work on getting these angles right. I'll have to wait till she's done because I got to shift the door. We can now call it a door. It's not just wood. You tell them it goes on a slide rail? It'll be a sliding door. So. But it is definitely going to be a proper sliding barn door, but it'll be a weather barrier. It'll help keep the water from going under her glass door into her linoleum floor. Which is the problem she's having currently. It's on the weather side of a house. So the weather side of a house, if you don't understand what that means, is it's the side that the wind blows on. Um, predominantly so the problem is when you mix the wind and the rain it wants to blow water into the the doorway so this is like a shutter that will protect that that even if you're inside you can go ahead and slide it closed so I know there's 
a thousand different ways to do this. Um, this is the way we're doing it and the way we found it was best. Um, if you know a better way, um, by all means, constructive criticism is encouraged. But uh, this is the way we've made doors for other places in the past, and it's worked out great. Put one extra one in. All right, so now we'll shift the door a little bit. Oh, no, no, I need it to come that way. Go ahead and move that way a little more. So, the problem with having so much stuff in a workshop you know, is you got, you got too much stuff in a workshop. Pick up the door a little bit. Just shift it over. Okay, that ought to do it. So I need to slide the board down so that I can get this angle. And this letter is in the way. And because of the weather, I don't want to put I don't want to put my splitter outside. So Rachel's gonna make sure that the corner of this board is right on the corner of this board. By doing this. She good? Yeah. All right, so now we're going to make some marks. And she, she's going to hold it down so I can make a mark right up the side here. And then here, I'm going to mark the corner. And then I'm going to mark the inside. Then attempt to connect them and hope that everything works out. We good? Yeah? Yeah. All right. Now we'll mark this one. And fingers crossed that it fits. I'm not a carpenter by no means, so I'm just the average Joe. Average Mike. Believe it or not, I got it cut right the first time. I didn't have to waste a board. Rachel's getting ready to tie it all together. I'm just gonna set them and then you make sure it's square at the bottom. The bottom. And now Rachel's going to zip them together. Okay. Now, make sure that she didn't go through. Not her, but the screws. Because this wood is just a touch thinner. I would have been devastated if it went through. Yeah, he has to make things perfect. So the good thing about this door is it's going to be hanging. It's not going to be... There is no jam side. And typically barn doors are on a slide rail. So the good, the good thing about it not being on a hinge is you don't have that weight hanging on the door 
to want to take the door out of square. So these are more to make the door a little sturdier because it should be hanging straight so that there's going to be no, yeah. It, it's just reinforcement. It's reinforcement. We should take it from this end. But I don't like the knots in the middle, so we're going to go this way. So we'll mark it the same way. And then I'll take it over into the uh, wood barn. And we will... Um, Stain the cut edges. Cut it. I'll use my leftover remnants here. And you could get fancy and put additional X's and make it a full X box, but we're just going to do the two long ones. And now I'll go to the other end and make the same. Okay, hopefully this one comes out good too. So, we got that board cut. And again, I got it on the first try. I'm getting better at this woodwork and stuff. Which is good because we don't have any more wood. <laughs> And then I'll do this in, and then we'll flip it. So I can get well, no, we got to do all the other screws, though. screws may seem like overkill, but we're trying to take out any possibility of warp. Tongue and groove tends to try to cup on the wet side, tries to swell out. So we want to try to not have that happen. It's now a door. So we'll get it flipped over. So we have some uh, knots that fell out that need to be filled up. So before we flip it over though, because there's one spot, that one big knot is like 90% covered. I'm just gonna throw some tape on the back here for now. And we'll pull that off later. 
And I think I'm going to do that with all the little through holes so that there's a place for her to kind of push it up against too. Here's the outside of the door. It's going to be beautiful. So she's going to go through and she's going to take her wood putty and fill these knot holes. And then we'll come back. And any of the heavy, there's some heavy grain and stuff like that too. Uh, we don't want any, any chance for water to want to set into the wood itself. So she's going to putty these up and then I'll bring you back and show you what it looks like. All right, y'all, so part one of the door is done. Um, we're going to release it all in one video. You can see Rachel sitting there. She's, she's tired. It didn't take that long, but it looks great. It's going to look a little weird because there's a lot of filler, but we got to sand it. So there she is with all the filler in her. And I'll flip you around so you can actually get a good look. So there she is with all the filler. And we did stain the, stain the wood first because we were worried about making sure that it was down in these grooves. Um, it's not a poly, so the, the wood putty will, st will stick into the wood. Um, plus, it's actually very, very grainy where this all is. Um, and what it is, it's a lot of mill marks and stuff like that, that once we sand it, it and we put the stain on it, they're going to be the dark spots that are going to set this door off because it's a, no a real knotty pine. And where most of this is, is all knots that were just, they were in the grain. And we wanted to make sure that there's no place that if water hits the door, we don't want it to run and get stuck in it. So we uh, filled it with, with the putty. And now what we'll do is we'll have to let this sit for the day and we'll come back tomorrow and we'll sand it all down. And then hopefully we got it to the point where we're ready to stain it, we're gonna flip it over and do the last couple of reinforcements. We have to reinforce the very edge right here. And then we're gonna stain the whole door all over again so that it all looks one color, all nice and uniform. And we'll really get that stain in there. So we're, uh, we're done for the day. We'll pick back up. All right, y'all. So we're back in the workshop again. And we got the door. Uh, we did flip it over. We got some of the bracing on the door. I got these last four pieces to cut for bracing. Um, that bracing is going to go to here down the, down the edges. This way the door is solid all the way around. And so I'm going to duck over to the cow barn where my saws are set up. And get those cut. I've already got all the angles marked all the angles marked out on it and as you can see right uh, there um, and then I'll cut them to length because those those cuts are going to be 90 degree but I had to mark all the all the angles because they're not quite 45 so let me go over there and get these cut and then we'll get them stained up and then I'll have to dry and we'll come back and work on the door again. So now I got all the angles cut. Now I'll start cutting them to length and we'll get them in there. You're wondering why did I cut the angles and then the length? Well, I want to make sure that the fit is really snug and that it looks really good. So I wanted to sneak up on that angle and make sure that the miter itself, you know, where, where that 45 degree ish is that it meets up really tight. So, now that I'm sure that the, that the angle is right, I can go ahead and do the 90 degree because 90 degrees is 90 degrees. So let's do it. All right, they cut up nice. Everything looks really good. Yeah, so I just did the test fit. I'm gonna flip you around to show you. So there's the test fit. All nice and pretty. That angle is a little different because this board's a little thinner, so it, it kind of looks like a gap. But if we go over here, you can see that it's actually perfect. And we got all of it, all of it ready. So that is the last of the bracing for the door. But we got to take that, uh, that raw wood and get the first coat of stain on it because there is no stain on the backside. 
and stuff like that and on the end grain and I want to make sure that we get something into this wood to help preserve it and, and stop the, the water from seeping into it. I know a stain isn't gr the best, but the type of stain we're using is a fence, um, a fence stain that has like some poly in it. You'll see when we when we actually put the the last coat on the door, it really look it'll really look good. So let me get set up and get some stain on these things. All right, so I got you guys set up on the on the door at the end of the door. And we're just going to get some stain on these. And I'm just actually going to stain the end grains and all that and get them put back to where they belong. Because I could number them, but I'm not going to see the numbers once I put the stain on them. So it's going to kind of defeat the purpose, right? So let me get something to stir the paint with. Or I should say, let me get something to stir the stain with. And it's a real shame because this side of the door, nobody's going to see it. So whenever somebody's in there, obviously the door is going to be open and this side faces the wall. But I did a really, you know, I'm not a carpenter. Well, I am one on YouTube. Um, but... I put a lot of time into figuring this out and, and doing the angles correct and all that, but nobody's going to see it. But you know what? I'm going to know it's there and it's going to be, it's going to be beautiful anyway. So like I said, I'm really concerned with the end grain, making sure that the end grain is really, really good because I don't want water running into this. And yeah, while it is just a wood stain, it is made for outdoor staining. Um, it definitely isn't water-based. I can smell the, the paint thinner in it. So now that we got the end grains, I'll concentrate on the back. And you can see it's just soaking it up. So Hopefully that's a good thing because it soaks up the stain and not water. But like they advertise this for, so it's holes lassoir for Ausen, meaning it is a wood paint for outside. All right, so now we got to let that dry. So let me flip you around. And for a bit of B-grade lumber, you know, it wasn't it wasn't our number two lumber. Uh, don't mind the sawdust. I'll blow that off later. I don't want to get it in the stain. But for a bit of, of number two pine, even the tongue and groove was pretty much a number two pine. One side was kind of number one. But that's the, of course, the outside um, that is facing down right now. And we'll get her flipped over once she's dry. And we will um, go ahead and sand the last two bits of putty. Um, because there's two spots that we had to do a second run of putty. But this door, I'm not a woodworker, but like I said, I, I play one on YouTube. I think I did all right. So we'll come back when this is dry. Well, I gotta do a second coat. So I'll bring you back for the second coat and then we'll get her flipped over. All right, folks, so we got the last bit of sanding done on the door and I just tack ragged it down. You can see there's quite a bit of filler. There was a bit of knot holes, but it's character. So. We got to get that last coat of uh, stain on the door 
And then this thing's done. So we're walking around over here to the other side and I'm going to show you where we hung this door up. So the issue she had was this is the weather side of the structure and let me slide the door open. And if you look, you can see here at the bottom, what was happening is with this being the weather side, the predominant wind is going this way and when it rains, water is going on this little ledge and it wants to go under the door. So she wanted a door longer than that to cover it up so that when there was bad weather, she didn't have to worry about it. So you saw me build this beautiful door out of tongue and groove and some boards. And we put a rail kit on it. And yeah. Beautiful. Let me flip you around. So there's the door and her plan is to refinish the wall to match the door. You can see that little bit of shine on the door is that combination um, um, varnish or polyurethane slash stain. Uh, that's why there's that little bit of satin shine on it. Uh, it will seal it from water. Which was the whole idea of the door, is that the water will hit it and cascade down. Um, that's why we hid the framework of it inside, because it's a shame, because the inside is beautiful. Let me, let me go inside and show you. So like I was saying, the inside of the door turned out beautiful as well. There's all the actual framework for the door. But it looks great. I think it turned out phenomenal. And she can even close it while she's inside here. And yeah, it worked out great. So, these projects are done. Now, I got big projects still going on at the house. That's next. We got hay in the field. We got all kinds of renovation work. But look at that door. That door turned out beautiful. I'm impressed with it. I'm not a carpenter, but I play one on YouTube. So, win-win, right? So we won this one. Now we just got to win that one on the hay. You know what I'm talking about. But, you know my motto. If you're thinking about family, you're thinking about friends, give them the what's up or the what's app. You know you'd like to hear from them too. And until the next adventure, I'll be the same.